I think I've clicked all the right buttons. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a good day out there. I hope you're ready to learn how to describe situations and experiences. Situations that you may have been in or experiences that you may have had. Um, we kind of describe them differently, don't we? Uh, we'll start in about 23 seconds. Let me uh, just make sure everything is working. Let me have a sip of water. Let's see here. What do we got? 10 seconds and we're starting. Looks like everything's working properly. Seven seconds. I'm pretty excited actually. Two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to learn how to describe situations and experiences that we have had. So, you may have had different experiences in your life and you might describe them in this way right now. It was fun or it wasn't fun or I liked doing that or I didn't like doing that. In this English lesson, we're going to look at a whole bunch of other ways to describe experiences and situations that you've been in. Let me just repeat that for a sec. We usually say experiences that you had or situations that you've been in. So, we kind of use each word a bit differently but they both refer to the things that happen in life or the things that you do in life. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about how to describe situations and experiences. Before we get started though, let me just uh, give a shout out to Todd and Dave. Thanks for being here for so many years. I think Todd and Dave have been helping for two and a half years now. It's a little crazy when you think about it. Um the other day, I looked at the folder of notes from my lessons and there's a lot of lessons in there. So, thanks to those two guys for being here uh for helping out for so long. Uh also, a big shout out to Pipat and Adi the Thai. I'm just saying hello to people. Hello to Lolly and Vitor and Renata and Adi. I said hi to Adi already. Uh and Eugene and May's Dance. Uh when I scroll back, I see Key Park. I see Tony. Uh so many familiar faces. So many members. Hi to Freddie Wolf as well. Um glad to see all of you there. If this is your first time here, this is a live lesson. Yes, it's happening right now. I'm sitting in my house talking to you and I'm going to talk about this topic. If you aren't familiar with this lesson uh and the chat portion of it, please use the chat to have fun English conversations with each other. Use it as one more opportunity to practice your English. Uh especially if the lesson gets boring, then then use the chat to practice English while you're waiting for it to get interesting again. Uh and if you have a question, please don't ask it in the chat. Please click on the link and use the form to submit a question and I will use uh, I will try to answer them in an orderly fashion. So, here we go. Let's get this lesson started. One way to describe something is to say that it was confusing but often we use the little phrase hard to understand. This is a huge classroom probably at a university and maybe the professor uh isn't very easy to understand. The professor is hard to understand. If someone said to you, how was the class that you went to today? You could say, oh, it was really confusing. The professor is hard to understand or the class was hard to understand. Uh this happened to me in university when I took my second calculus class. I think I've mentioned that before. When I took calc one, it was easy to understand. When I took calc two, calculus two, it was hard to understand. I passed but my grade wasn't very good at all. You can also in English uh in a very informal way say that it was something else when you're describing something. So, let me use this in a few example sentences because it's kind of a weird little uh little phrase. If I went kayaking on this beautiful lake, if someone said, what was that like? What was that experience like? I might say it was something else. So, what this means is that it was amazing. It was wonderful. Uh it was just awesome. It was really, really fun. Uh when you say uh an experience or a situation was something else, it just means you really, really enjoyed it. Uh maybe you went to a concert and it was just amazing. You saw Ed Sheeran. You might say, oh, it was something else. It was amazing. So, kind of an informal way to describe something that is really cool, really fun, really amazing. And then, 
we have a simpler way to describe something here and it's just to say that something is enjoyable. We often use this when we talk about having a meal with others. So, if you have the experience of having a meal with friends or family, you might say, oh, it was a very enjoyable meal. Um it was just an enjoyable time. We went to a restaurant. The the food was delicious. Uh we had really good conversation. It was a very enjoyable time or it was a very enjoy enjoyable thing to do. Sorry, I'll try to pronounce the English words correctly as I do this lesson. Um by the way, when I do these lessons, it's very enjoyable for me. I hope it's enjoyable for you. Eerie. So, when I think of the word eerie, I usually think of being alone, usually not somewhere like not in a city, usually like out in a country. If I walked down this path at night and there was just a little bit of moonlight coming through the tree branches, I would describe that walk as an eerie experience. I if someone said, how was your walk through the forest at night? I I would say, oh, it was eerie. There were little sounds I could hear and the wind was blowing a little bit and making this funny noise or um I couldn't quite see. It was a little bit dark. It was just very eerie. I thought I was hearing things all around me. So, when something is eerie, it means a little bit scary. Uh a little bit spooky might be another word that we would use Uh, but certainly a walk through the forest at night would be eerie. Uh so, this is a very informal word. Uh, I had to look it up to make sure that it's actually a word in English but when something is really boring, sometimes we call it a snooze fest. (laughs) So, I'll use the example again of uh, a classroom but this time a teacher who's really boring where as you're as you're listening, you might actually be starting to fall asleep or you might just use the word snooze fest to describe something that was really boring and you didn't actually fall asleep. Um sometimes when you're sitting and listening to someone talk for a long time, uh you could describe it as saying, oh, that lecture was really boring or that talk was uh, was just a snooze fest um which means it was so boring you could have fallen asleep or it might even mean you did fall asleep. That can happen as well. Again, a very informal word, snooze fest um but I thought it was just a word I made up but it if you look it up on Google, you'll actually find a definition um for that word. Outstanding. So, when you describe something as outstanding, it means that it was done at a very high level. It means that if you're watching a performance, the dancers or actors or singers were perfect. They just you were just amazed at how good of a job they did. So, if I went to see um a show um maybe some kind of stage show if someone said, oh, what was what was the play like? I could say, oh, it was outstanding. It was just amazing. It was one of the best plays I've ever seen. So, when you describe something as outstanding, you just mean that it's really, really well done. I would use this to describe, I don't know if you know English with Lucy. English with Lucy is another YouTube channel uh, and she teaches English and her lessons are outstanding. That's how I would describe them. They are really well put together. She's very well spoken very logical. That's always important to me. I like people who are logical. So, I would say her lessons are outstanding. Now, the opposite would be what we call a letdown. Maybe you've wanted to go to a concert for a long time and you bought tickets and you went to the concert and it wasn't very good. (laughs) Maybe the musicians sound really good uh, when you listen to a recording but when they play live, they just don't do a good job. You would say, oh, it was a letdown. How was the concert? It was it was a letdown. It was kind of a letdown. They they weren't as good as I thought they were going to be. Another example would be if you were going to see a play and there was a famous actor in the play and then the day you go, that actor is sick and they have someone fill in. The understudy uh performs instead. You would say, oh, the play was really good but it was a bit of a letdown because the main actor wasn't there. So, a letdown. Hope my lessons aren't a letdown for you. I hope they're outstanding. No, I wouldn't describe my own lessons that way. Hey, when you have a lot of fun, when you go out with friends or maybe go out with family and you really enjoy yourself, we sometimes say that it's a blast. Uh how was your day at the beach? It was a blast. We had so much fun. We played volleyball. We laughed. At night, we had a campfire on the beach. 
I had a blast or it was a blast. You can use either way to describe it. Um so definitely when you really enjoy something when it is a lot of fun we would say that it's a blast. Mesmerizing. When you describe an experience as mesmerizing you're basically saying you couldn't look away because it was so interesting. It was so cool. It was so fun to watch. When I think of the word mesmerizing I usually think of musicians who are really good at playing their instrument. When I watch someone who's a really good guitar player and I watch their fingers on the guitar and I hear the sounds it's mesmerizing. I can't I can't help but just watch them play. Um I'm not how would I say this? It's not hypnotizing. That's a little bit different but mesmerizing just is a time when you're in a situation or experience where you just watch what's happening and you just really really enjoy it. And then out of this world. I think I talked about this phrase in another lesson a few weeks ago. I think I described a trip as being out of this world. When you say something is out of this world it just means it was like so fun, so enjoyable, so awesome. It was one of the most amazing things you've ever done in your life. So, if you ever went on a trip and you stayed on a lake like this and if someone said, whoa, whoa, what was that like? You probably would say, oh, it was out of this world. Like at night we could see the uh northern lights. Uh at night we could see um uh lightning bugs flying around. You might describe it as out of this world. Something that was just really, really fun, enjoyable and beautiful I think. All of those things. Captivating. So, I would say captivating fits in the same category for me as mesmerizing. When I think of something that's captivating, it's again when you're appreciating something so much you you just you just can't stop watching. When you go to a concert, when you go to a show, if something just um you know you visually it's amazing. When you hear things it's amazing. Um we would just say it's captivating. When people dance it can be captivating. When people play an instrument it can be captivating. It just means that they do it well to the point where you just really enjoy watching them do it. Worth it. So, this is a phrase that people have asked me about. People who are learning English. What does worth it mean? Well, worth it means that something you did something and you're glad that you did it. Hey, have you ever gone to Disneyland? Yeah, I went last year. Was it worth it? Oh, it was totally worth it. We had so much fun. And the flip side would be, no, it wasn't worth it. (laughs) We didn't have any fun and it was really expensive. So, when you describe something as being worth it, we're not always talking about money but a little bit, you know. Was the concert worth it? Oh, yeah. I totally would go again. It was totally worth it. I don't mind that I spent a hundred dollars to see Ed Sheeran. It was worth it. So, you're what you're saying is the amount of money you spent or the time you spent um was valuable to you. You were like, yes, this was a good decision. Uh I was happy that I did this. Hey, let's look at a few questions and I see I need to check my audio for a sec. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let me answer a few questions here. Looks like I have some coming in. First question is from Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. No question today. Wish you have wish you to have only pleasant situations to face with. Let me rephrase that. I wish that you only have pleasant situations to face today. That'd be a good way to say it. Have a great weekend. You too, Yaroslav. Thank you so much for the comment. Uh let's see here. So, Azam says, hi, teacher Bob. Stories from my Canadian friends. Meeting a bear in their yard while making chicken kebab. Have you ever been in this situation? So, I've been in this situation once. I was camping at Algonquin Park and we were walking and a bear ran across the road in front of us. It was brief. It was fast but it was uh it was a scary situation. That's how I would describe that situation. Uh next question. Vitor says, what was your best life experience and why? I think every time uh Jen and I had a baby, every time one of our children was born, that is that is an amazing experience and I can only say this. It you can't describe in words all of the feelings you have when you uh when a child is born. It's just really, really cool. Uh let's see here. 
Renata says, hello, Bob. I've never been in situations where I had to speak English for a long time but I'm sure I'll do just fine. I could be a bundle of nerves though. So, that would be a nerve wracking experience. We would say that when you know that you have to speak in English for you or if I had to speak French for a whole day, uh, I would certainly be a bundle of nerves as well. Ruslan says, hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you today, sir? Could you describe a funny situation you've been in lately? Have a nice weekend. So, a funny situation lately. I'm trying to think if anything funny has happened to me. Um so, w- one thing that happened to me which I didn't catch on video. I was making a short English lesson uh on a bridge in my local town and a man walked by and then he turned and he stared at me the whole time I was making the video and then when I hit the stop button, I was just gonna say hi to him but when I hit the stop button, he just turned and walked away. So, it was kind of an awkward experience. That's how I would describe that one. Uh funny, awkward, strange, weird. Boonlert says, hello, Bob. Is the cost of living in Vancouver more expensive than Toronto? So, cost of living is how we refer to how much it costs to live. You know, rent, food, all of those things. I think Vancouver and Toronto, they're probably fairly equal at this point. I'm not an expert though. It used to be more expensive to live in British Columbia but I think it's becoming very expensive to live everywhere now. Hey, thanks George Hahn for becoming a member. Good to see you uh, here. Thanks for uh, clicking that join button below and becoming a member. That's awesome. Thank you. Um Murat says, hi, your channel is awesome. Do you recommend any grammar book or do you have your own grammar book? I don't have any grammar books. I've used the grammar books that we have at school sometimes to flip through and look for ideas and I don't know which ones they are but if you leave a comment below, I'll have a look today and I'll let you know which ones we use at our school. Uh Sebastian, does something else have, does it always have a positive meaning? It depends how you say it, you know. Oh, I drove a Tesla the other day and it was something else. That's positive. If I said, oh, she has a new boyfriend and he's something else. You you see how I said it in kind of a sarcastic way? Then it would have a little bit of a a negative connotation. If you say a person thinks they're something else, that means they're arrogant. That's how that would work. Okay, let's get to the next. Um, So, this is a grammar question. So, I'll go over it quick. Hi, teacher Bob. When described something happening in the past, can we use other tenses other than the past tense and expressions other than used to? Thanks a lot, best teacher. So, I'm gonna tie this to experiences and situations. Um we we almost always use the past tense. If we think about the story, I saw a man on the bridge. Um he left when I was done making my video. So, we're gonna use past tense there a lot. Um and used to is very common when talking about something in the past that you did a lot and you don't do any more. So, uh let's see here. Ario says, Ola, have you ever experienced or watched a short video that was odd in your life? Me, often. Example, baby crying contest in Japan. <laughs> odd but I love it. I have not watched any um odd shows like that. I I usually don't watch a lot of that type of television but it certainly sounds interesting. Um let's see here. Freddie says, hey, Bob, actually a snooze fest could be a good solution to speed up the time in order to finish the lesson rapidly. That would never be the case with our Bob for sure. Yeah, you know, sleeping is a little bit like time travel, isn't it? If you're on a trip and you're riding in the vehicle and you sleep, when you wake up, you're at your destination. So, Yes, sometimes a snooze fest can be a, a way to fast forward time. Uh Miroki, Mir, Miracle, Miracle. It's hard for me to sound out the word or the name but hello. Hello, teacher. Your lessons are really outstanding. Thank you for that. Well, thank you for describing the experience of watching my lessons using the word outstanding. Eric from Melbourne. How could I use the term light at the end of the tunnel? When you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it means something bad in your life is ending. So, let's say you were sick and 
you were in the hospital and you came home and you you just feel really weak. But after a few days, you start to feel better. We would say you see the light at the end of the tunnel. People are using this to describe the pandemic right now. It seems like cases are going down or at least stabilizing. So, it's close to hopefully being over. We're starting to maybe see the light at the end of the tunnel. Rubens, good morning from Brazil, Bob. About the expression, a letdown. Can I use disappointing with the same meaning or are they used in different contexts? Thanks. Yes, you could totally use disappointing. How was the concert? It was disappointing. How was the concert? It was a letdown. It was a real letdown. Um, I think letdown is just very informal and disappointing is a very is a lot more common um in the sense of if I was to use one with an uh someone learning English, I would use the word disappointing because I know they would understand me. Uh, next question is a grammar question but it kind of relates to situations. What is the difference between using in or at with places? This is something that I haven't done a really good lesson on it, you know, but I was at the park. I was in the park. You could say both. Um I was at school. I was in the school. I, let me think about this because I think I should do a lesson on just in and at because it's it's more than I can answer right now. Um but yeah, I was at a concert and it was an they it was an outstanding performance. I was in the concert hall and it was an outstanding performance. So, I can kind of flip there. Uh Bochi. Hi, Bob. When do you have a butterfly in your stomach? I have butterflies in my stomach whenever I need to talk in front of a lot of people. Although, I must confess, I don't mind talking in front of lots of people. Um but I do usually still feel a little bit nervous before I do that. Hey, let's get back to this lesson though. I do wanna say hi to the 387 people watching. If you're new here, don't forget to click this red subscribe button and uh I think you'll uh, enjoy the lessons you receive if you do that. Over the top. When we say something is over the top, we mean it's amazing but it might even be like almost too much. A good example would be this. If you go to a concert and you see that they have giant screens everywhere. Like they actually have more screens than they need. You could say, oh, that it was just over the top. They went over the top for that concert. I mean, there were 27 big screens in the stadium. So, when you say over the top, you mean you were expecting something to be this good and it was even better but maybe in a slightly crazy way. It was over the top. My lessons are not over the top. My lessons are as good as they need to be. That's how I would describe them. Hard to follow. Now, this one is similar to the first one we look at, uh, looked at. Uh, we talked about hard to understand. When you say that something is hard to follow, if you said, well, the class, it was hard to follow or the prof, he was hard to follow. Um it doesn't mean you're walking behind them. It means you're having trouble understanding. You might be experiencing this when you watch my videos. I might talk too fast for you and you might find that it's hard to follow the lesson. So, when you describe something as hard to follow, it means you're having trouble understanding it. Maybe you're watching uh, a lot of English television and in some cases, you can understand what's happening but with other shows, you find it hard to follow, hard to understand. Nasty. Now, the word nasty has a lot of different meanings. When I think of describing a situation and using the word nasty, I usually think of a storm. So, sometimes we'll just have a really nasty storm at night. That means there's lots of wind and lightning and rain and thunder. Uh it's just um a crazy storm. So, when you describe something as nasty, it means that it's not pleasant. So, you wouldn't describe something nasty as being enjoyable. You would say, oh, that was a nasty storm last night. I hope trees didn't blow over in the wind. It was nasty. Remarkable. So, when you describe a situation as remarkable, um you're basically saying it's something you'll remember for a long time. You're saying that you did enjoy yourself. Let's say you visit a city somewhere and you just really enjoyed all of the buildings you saw. You could say, oh, it was just remarkable. I went to Toronto and it was remarkable. Um it can also be 
that you're impressed? Like maybe you just thought, wow, they've built some really beautiful buildings in this city. Uh it is definitely remarkable. So, memorable would be another word you could use but uh remarkable simply means that you liked it a lot. Puzzling. When you find a situation puzzling, it means that you were somewhere and you needed to figure out something and you had trouble figuring it out. I find it puzzling when I'm in a traffic jam um because I don't understand why it's happening and I don't know how to get out of it. You just have to wait. So, when you say something is puzzling, it means it's hard for you to understand either why it's happening or it's hard for you to figure out how to get out of the situation. Um let's say you were sitting in a class in school and it was the wrong class. You might say, oh, this is really puzzling. Why am I in the wrong class and how do I what do I do now? So, it's when you're in a situation where you don't know how you you don't know necessarily how you got there and you don't know how to get out of it. By the way, that was a pretty bad explanation of puzzling. You should look that one up online to get a better definition. Um inspiring. When something is inspiring, it makes you want to do better things in your life. So, the best example would be maybe you went and listened to someone talk and they talked about things you could do to do a better job at work. Maybe your work sent you to a workshop and they had a speaker there who taught you some techniques to be more efficient uh, at work. You could say that that uh that experience was inspiring. It caused you to change how you do certain things in your life. It's why we have the term inspirational speaker. Sometimes you go and hear a speaker and the person can be described as inspirational. Um and you could use that to describe the event as well. You could say, oh, that workshop was inspiring or the workshop was inspirational. It made me want to do things in a better way. Creepy. (laughs) Whenever I think of creepy, I think about there's a lake close to my house and when I was a teenager, there was an old house on the lake. This is not it. This is just a picture. Uh it was an old house on the lake and it had like all the windows were broken and one of my friends liked to go there at night to explore that house and I found the house really creepy and I found the experience really creepy. Um we would go with flashlights and we would kind of he was always looking for old coins and those kinds of things. So, I found it very creepy. Um mostly because um no one lived in the house. The house was starting to fall apart. Uh, and we would always go at night. By the way, if you watch uh any kind of horror movie, you would probably say the movie was really creepy and we even have a phrase in English. You could say, oh, it creeped me out. So, when something's creepy, it's a little bit scary. That would be how I would describe it. Too much or overwhelming. When you describe something as being too much or when you say something was overwhelming, You're basically saying that you weren't comfortable there. For me, when I'm in a crowd of people, it's too much. It's too much for me. When I go to a sporting event and it's crowded like this, it's too much. When I go to the a store and if the music's really loud, it's too much for me. So, it's when something is uncomfortable. It's when you don't like something. It's when usually your senses, maybe your sense of space or your sense of touch or hearing uh or smell. Um there's just too much happening and you would say you would use too much to describe it. Like, oh, I went to the concert and uh I was in the front row but it was too much for me. It was it was too loud. It was too crowded. It was too much. I did not like it at all. It was overwhelming and we use this phrase a lot by the way, too much. Um yeah, it was just too much for me. Mystical. Whenever I think of an experience that's mystical, it's usually something that happened early in the morning. I was on a trip once for school uh, and I couldn't sleep because of the time change and so I went for a walk before the sun came up and I would say that walk, that experience was very mystical. Um I saw the sunrise. Um there were no people around. I was just in nature. So, I would say mystical is a beautiful feeling you get 
usually from being in nature at a time when something cool is happening like a sunrise or a sunset. Um maybe you're walking along the ocean hearing the waves and watching the sun go down. You might say that it's that's a very mystical experience. And then of course, we have magical which is very very similar. Magical would again be used to describe an experience that you just really enjoyed and was really fun. It was very very interesting and it made you feel really really cool inside. Like if I visited this castle, I would probably say the experience of visiting the castle was very magical. Um I felt like I was in another time and place. Um a zoo. So, I used this phrase in a short lesson a few weeks ago. I said, ah, it was a zoo. So, the best example I can come up with for describing a situation as a zoo would be Black Friday in North America. So, Black Friday is a day in uh November where the stores have really cheap uh things. So, for one day, you can buy all kinds of things like TVs and other items for not very much money but it's a zoo. People line up in the morning. When they open the doors, it looks like this literally. People run in and they they fight over things and they get mad and they yell at each other and everyone's trying to buy the same thing at the same time. I would describe that as a zoo. Ah, oh, it was a zoo. Sometimes my classes, my students have lots of energy and they're having trouble sitting in their seats and when I come home, I might say, Jen might say, how were your classes? And I might say, oh, it was a zoo today. Um you do know what a zoo is, right? A zoo is a place where there's lots of animals. So, when we use this phrase, when we describe something as a zoo, we're basically saying people are acting crazy uh in that situation. Hey, let's get back to some questions. By the way, if you are new here and you're not familiar with what's happening, um I teach for 10 minutes. I answer questions for 10 minutes. Then I teach for 10 minutes again and then I answer member questions from the chat. So, right now, I'm turning on members only chat mode. Um if you are not a member, stick around. I'm gonna answer some questions. Uh I'm going to answer questions from the form as well as from the chat uh and we'll get back to the lesson in about 10 minutes. So, um here we go. Let me get the next question on the screen. Um Remember, I only answer questions related to the topic on Fridays. So, here we go. Uh Girgo says, hello, Bob. My question is, what do you think about global climate change? Well, I always respond to this situation in the world uh, as a farmer. I think that every spring, um we're noticing that the last frost date is earlier. So, Our spring in Canada is starting earlier than it did a number of years ago. We've also noticed that in the fall, it stays warmer longer. So, that benefits us right now um but I think that we need to uh do everything we can not to pollute and not to do things that are destructive to this world. Uh not a cool kid says, Bob, do you think only British people use the word blast? I don't know. I've heard this a lot. I went to university in the States and people said it. I say it. I had a blast at university by the way. It was a lot of fun. Hey, let me do some uh questions from the chat here. Um let's see. We have um you guys can look at my messy room behind me. Adi says to Zeev, my city is Fisanuloke. It's part of North Thailand. Cool. Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. What kind of clothes would you say are over the top? By the way, I enjoy a bit of a struggle. Ha ha. Coming up with questions to ask during the live lessons. What would I say? I would say a baseball cap is normal. Any kind of super fancy hat I think is over the top. If you're wearing a hat from a sports team or you're wearing a hat because you want shade, it's cool. But if you wear like a top hat, I think that's a little bit over the top. Uh Cecilia says, the playground is a creepy short story written by Ray Bradbury. Have you read it, Bob? I probably have. I've read a lot of stuff by Ray Bradbury but it doesn't come to mind right now. I can't quite remember it. Freddie Wolf, Bob, why do you say puzzling for a traffic jam? I thought it was a puzzle game with a lot of little pieces to make a picture. Yes, a puzzle is 
something with pieces that you put together but in English, we often say something's puzzling when we don't understand it. You know, um my friend is gonna move to the United States but it's kind of puzzling. I don't understand why he wouldn't stay here. So, I'm basically saying I don't understand something when I say puzzling. Cecilia says, thanks so much for this amazing lesson. No problem. Uh Stacy says, I'd like to see old castles in France and Germany. I think it it will be magical. Yes, I would like to do that too. Especially in France, that would be fun. Anyone? Hi, anyone? Hi, teacher Bob. What's the difference between overwhelming and underwhelming? Thanks. So, when something's underwhelming, it didn't impress you. It wasn't that exciting. It was uh less enjoyable than you thought it was going to be. Let's say McDonald's invented a new kind of hamburger and they advertised it as the most amazing hamburger in the world and you went and had one and it wasn't that amazing. It was kind of just a normal hamburger. You would say, well, that was underwhelming. You know, the experience of getting that brand new hamburger was underwhelming because uh you weren't impressed by it. Yaroslav says, can we say unbelievable or catchy when we see some beautiful view? What else? What other adjective can we use? So, when you see a beautiful view, you could say it's awe-inspiring. Like, oh, I went to the Grand Canyon and it was awe-inspiring. When something is awe-inspiring, it just makes you, you just look at it and you're just amazed. Um and we would say amazing. It was an amazing view. Uh we wouldn't really say catchy. We would probably say um those two. I would probably say awe-inspiring um or the other one I said that I can't remember. <laughs> Amazing. Uh Peapot says, is remarkable and landmark mean the same way? I feel like this viewpoint is the city's name landmark and most of the travelers should visit there once. So, s- sort of but not not really. Like a landmark is an area in a city or a town or a country that's recognizable. Like one of the common landmarks of Toronto is the CN Tower. You could describe the CN Tower as being remarkable but it's not really related to the fact that it's a landmark. Uh Zeev says, Bob, the nicest teacher. How's the weather now? Is it still spring and what time is it? It is 906 AM Eastern Standard Time and it is 15 degrees Celsius outside. We have moved from winter into spring and yesterday and today it feels like summer. High of 26 degrees. Um that's pretty warm. Naomi says, I'd like to experience something magical. Yes. Uh I hope you do sometime. Lolly says, Bob, meeting you on YouTube was out of this world for me. Cool, Lolly. Uh it's cool to know you as well. Audi, hi, Bob. Are you past my question? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the actual form. If you put one in the form and I actually can't remember. Let me just double check if I went over. Maybe I skipped your question by accident. That happens sometimes, doesn't it? Um yeah, I can't see. Maybe the chat's working a little oddly today. Hey, let me grab another. Sorry about that, Audie. Let me grab another question from the form. Kimmy and Kiwi say, teacher Bob, what expression can I use when a couple of bad things happen at the same time or in a row? Is there a proverb or expression people use in that situation? Um so, sometimes when one bad thing happens, people say they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So, I'm not sure where this phrase comes from but um and then sometimes people think bad things happen in threes. So, when two bad things happen, um they're like, oh, I I hope another bad thing doesn't happen because sometimes bad things happen in threes. Um we don't say that a lot though. I think the other waiting for the other shoe to drop is pretty common. Um but uh certainly when bad things happen, it's not nice when they all happen in a row. Uh let's see. Caesar's question, not quite related but I'll answer it. Hello, Bob and everybody. What is the difference between I play and I do play? Why do English speakers use do before a verb sometimes? Thank you for your help, Bob. Well, we do do that sometimes, don't we? Sorry, I wanted to answer this question so I could use the word do twice in a row. We do do that, don't we? I don't know why we do that but we do do that. So, we use this to emphasize, okay? When we want to really strongly emphasize what's happening, we use do in front of the verb. So, if someone said, 
Bob, do you like making YouTube videos? I would say, oh, I do like making YouTube videos. Bob, do you like pizza? I do like pizza. I could just say, I like pizza. But when I say, I do like pizza, it means I really, really, really like it. Um, from Hobart, hello, teacher. Hope everything is okay. How to describe the situation. I'm gonna add the word to when you can't answer the question correctly. I would always go back to the I liked it. I didn't like it. It was fun. It wasn't fun. Those are your basic responses to describing most situations or I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it. Okay? So, if someone said, did you like your trip? You could say, I liked it or I didn't like it. Um if someone said, how was your class? I enjoyed it or I didn't enjoy it. So, um I liked it or I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it. Um it was fun. It wasn't fun. Those are your basic responses for situations. Let's see here. Um Stacy, I don't understand why she dumped her nice ex-boyfriend and got married with the horrible man. It is puzzling to me. Yes, that would be a great use of the word puzzling to describe a situation. Key Park says, I'm confused if remarkable and icon mean the same thing. Thank you. Not really. Um remarkable is just used to describe something that is um extraordinary. That's what I would say. Whereas, an icon is either something on your desktop on a computer or a very popular person like a pop icon is how we would describe it. Um let's see here. Sorry, Audie. I'm maybe I didn't see your question. I'm just scrolling back again. Maybe it didn't pop up. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna keep moving on though. Here we go. Freddie says, yes, in France, we have so many castles. Some of them are on the way to be rebuilt in the same way that the people from the Middle Ages did. Very interesting to watch the old machines. Oh, they're actually using old machines to rebuild the old buildings. That's cool. I think I saw that on a TV show once. Betty Lou says, hi, the cutest teacher, Bob. Question, what do you think is the most charming character in books you've read? Stay hydrated. Most charming character. Uh, let me see. I do like all of the hobbits. I did think Bilbo and Frodo. Uh Bilbo from the Hobbit and Frodo from the Lord of the Rings. I thought they were very charming. Uh very nice people. Um let's see. Ivan says, hi teacher Bob. Have you been overwhelmed by winter in Canada? Usually not but when the electricity isn't working, when the power goes out in the winter, that's overwhelming. It doesn't happen very often. But that's a time where I feel like, oh, this is uh it's a little overwhelming to live in Canada when that happens. Hey folks, I'm going to switch back to subscriber mode and we will get back to the lesson in just a moment. Let me finish off the subscriber question. Um questions. Betty Lou says, I do love watching Bob's and Brent's YouTube videos. Yes, Brent does some great videos too. You should check him out. Uh Adi says, my question is why I can't find the click button subscribe in Bob's podcast channel. I don't know. That's a very technical question. I'll have to look into that. Uh let's see. Cecilia says, me too. Adi says, thank you so much, Dave the Canadian and thanks, Dave for helping out as well. But uh hey, we're back to uh subscriber mode. Uh by the way, if you are not a member of the channel and you want to find out why you should be, you don't have to be. There is a join button. If you click it, you'll get some more information. In the description below, there's also an explanation and I'll just let you know really quick. You get an extra video every week. Uh you get your name in green during a live chat. You get a little crown by your name. You get to ask questions during members only time during live lessons um and you get priority response to comments left below videos. I always every day try to sit down and reply to member only comments. I reply to a lot of comments, members and non-members uh but I also do that and just lately, you get a little mini lesson plan for the week if you're a member if that's something that's interesting for you. But let's finish off this lesson. Nuts. So, this is a very informal way to describe something similar to when you say something was a zoo. Every time Apple comes out with a new phone, um people line up for hours at the Apple store in their city to get the new phone and I just think this is nuts. When you say something is nuts, 
It means you're like, I don't know why people do that. They're a little bit crazy maybe. I wouldn't do that. I just think it's nuts. You can also use nuts to describe something like this. You could say, oh, it was nuts at the store. There were so many people there and they were all trying to grab the same thing. So, when you say something is a zoo or when you say something is nuts, it's very, very similar. Both very informal uh but both quite common. A ghost town. So, a ghost is like a spirit of someone after they've died. I don't really believe in ghosts but when you have a town with no people in it, we call it a ghost town. We also describe something where there are no people as a ghost town. If I went to the grocery store in the middle of the night, it would be a ghost town. There wouldn't be any people in the store except for the cashiers. So, you can use ghost town to describe anything I was gonna say that is devoid of people. Do you know the word devoid? Uh this when a something is devoid of something, it means that it's not there. But when a store is empty in the middle of the night, you might describe it as a ghost town. And then of course, one other word on the same level is packed. So, we're talking about a place being very crowded. Uh what was it like at the grocery store? It was packed. There were so many people there. What was it like um at the restaurant? The restaurant was packed. We had to wait an hour to get a seat. So, when you say something is packed, it means it is very, very crowded. It means that there are a lot of people there. And then pleasant. When you describe something as being pleasant, it means that you enjoyed it. A lot of times, I think about conversations. We sometimes describe conversations as being pleasant. Oh, I had a really pleasant conversation with my mom the other day. That means I had a nice conversation, an enjoyable conversation. It means I smiled a lot during the conversation. So, when you describe uh, an event, uh, a situation or an experience as pleasant, it means it made you happy. It was nice. Energizing. When I go for a walk, it's energizing. You would think if I went for a walk, I would be tired after my walk but any kind of exercise I do actually gives me more energy for the day. When I go for a walk, I'm more alert. I'm more awake. I'm very, very energized. So, you could say that working out is energizing. It gives you energy. Refreshing. When you describe something as being refreshing, it means that you've done something differently or you've done something that just makes you feel very, very calm and peaceful. Um when you go to maybe yoga class which I've never really done, I don't think. I think you would think it's very refreshing. You might even say it's a breath of fresh air. So, at work, sometimes we do something different and it's very refreshing. Sometimes we eat lunch outside instead of eating lunch inside and it's very refreshing. We're doing something new in a different place and it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Exhausting. So, I tried to find a picture of someone uh, babysitting or taking care of young children uh, because that can be exhausting. When you do something that makes you very tired, when you do something that makes you uh, unhappy, tired, maybe you have to do it for a long time, we describe it as exhausting. You could describe your job as exhausting. If I had a job where I had to lift bricks all day, I would come home and say work was exhausting today. The experience was exhausting. So, it just means something that made you very, very tired. Harrowing. So, a harrowing experience is an experience that was very stressful. A car accident would be a harrowing experience. If you were in a store and the store got robbed, that would be a harrowing experience. When we say something is a harrowing experience, it's very stressful. It's probably something bad that has happened um and it's probably something like the two examples I just gave you. Um certainly, if you are in a car accident, it's a very harrowing experience. It's frightening. It's stressful. It is not pleasant at all. Exhilarating. I'll say that word again. Exhilarating. Probably a hard word for English learners to learn to pronounce. But when something is exhilarating, it, mean, it means it's very, very exciting. So, when you go on a roller coaster, it's definitely exhilarating. <laughs> it's something that um 
it's not that you're afraid, but it's something that gives you an adrenaline rush. Do you know what adrenaline is? Your body releases adrenaline when you do something slightly scary or exciting or fun or extreme like going on a roller coaster. But certainly at the end of each school year as a school, we sometimes go to an amusement park and when I go on the roller coaster, it's exhilarating. So, I wanna say it's like scary but in a good way. Does that make sense? Like it's a little bit scary but it's also a lot of fun. It's kind of a mixture of the two. Well organized. I love going to events that are well organized. I love it when I'm in a situation at work and someone has organized something and it's just well organized. It's so nice. (laughs) It's just a better experience when it's well organized. I sometimes go to teacher conventions and I really like it when the convention is well organized. So, everything runs on time. There's a schedule for the day. Lunch is ready when lunch starts. You don't have to wait for lunch. So, everything Uh, Whoever is in charge has organized the event well and it's well organized. As opposed to a mess or a disaster. So, you can describe something as a mess even if it's not messy, okay? So, a mess is when let's say after you eat in your kitchen, maybe you eat takeout and there's just stuff everywhere. We say it's a mess. But if you go to an event that's not well organized, you could say it's a mess. So, maybe it was supposed to start at nine and it doesn't start till 10. Um maybe they um they had a microphone and the microphone stopped working and then everyone was supposed to have lunch at noon but lunch wasn't ready until 12 30. You would say, ah, the whole day was a mess. It was a disaster. It was not well organized. So, when you say something's a mess, it's the opposite of saying that it's well organized. Excruciating. Another word that's probably hard to pronounce. Excruciating. When something is excruciating, it's really hard to watch or listen to because it might be boring. It might be very badly done. It might just be um maybe you can tell they weren't well prepared. A good example would be listening to someone play a musical instrument when they're not good at it but they play a really long song. So, when I was um I used to go to piano recitals and children would play piano and most of the children would have really good songs and play them but every once in a while um one of the kids would play a song and you could tell they hadn't practiced very much and it was excruciating. Basically means it was just really hard to sit there and listen to because it wasn't well done and they weren't well prepared. Excruciating. Hey, that's the last slide. So, I'm going to answer questions for a bit. Uh, I do wanna say thank you for watching the formal part of the lesson. Let's uh, let's see how many questions are left on this topic and we will wrap this up. So, let's see here. From Shota, hello, Bob. Can you tell me the difference in nuance usage between mystical and mysterious? So, to me, mystical is more of a like to me, nature is mystical, okay? Nature has these like when you see actual mist or when the sun rises or when a storm goes by on the horizon, it's very mystical. You can see the power of the world around us. When something's mysterious, it just means you're not quite sure what's going on. Like you could say a lot of people are going in the building across the road. It's very mysterious. See, it means you don't know why they're going there. Uh, let's see here. Musa, sorry, I don't mean to laugh. Musa, dearest teacher Bob, long time no see because I've been very busy lately. Plus today, my friend's elbow hit me square on the eye. My teacher immediately bandaged my eye. Well, I hope you are not hurt seriously. I hope it's just a small injury and that you get better uh, and I'm glad to see you back here. That is great. And yes, I definitely hope that that eye gets better. Uh let's see here. Mohammed says, I was in Niagara Falls yesterday and like always, it was mindful experience as being there opens the mind to feel the power of present time. Niagara Falls is a cool place to visit. You see all of this water thundering. It's going over the waterfall and you're just reminded 
how little we are, how people are quite little compared to all of the big things that we see in the world around us. It is an amazing planet that we live on and amazing things are happening around us all the time. It's very cool. Hey, that's the end. I'm done with questions. I'm done the lesson. So, thank you so much for watching. It was fun to uh be able to talk a little bit about how to describe situations and experiences. Uh I'll just say bye to a few people in the chat and uh, I will uh hit the stop button in a bit. So, bye to Stacy and Cecilia and Jeff and Case and Anne and MK and Anne again and Mohammed and Mohammed A. Thank you for leaving the question. Aria, bye to Rose and Miss Mignon and Alina and everyone else who is watching. Bye to Lolly, uh Lolly Lolly. Bye to Dave and Todd. Thanks for moderating the chat. Bye to Eugene. Bye to Freddie. Bye Wanda. Uh bye to Todd again. Bye to Adi. Uh Jose. Naomi T. Uh Jesus. Tony. Uh Hamza. Cecilia. Jose. Leila. Millennium. Will Smith. Happy. Cleopatra. I'm gonna stop saying bye now. Bye everybody. Have a great day. Uh again, no live stream tomorrow. I did one last week but there will be another one the first Saturday of June and this lesson that you just were part of, I will trim it down to be about 20 to 30 minutes. I will remove all of the viewer questions. So, it will be a pure lesson on the topic and do watch it again uh later this weekend or next week. Take the time to listen to it again. Um it just Re- repetition is just a great way to learn a language. It's not exciting but it is a great thing to do. When you listen to something two or three times, it just really helps you understand what you heard. Anyways, do that if you can. Look for that lesson in a couple of days and have a good weekend. Bye.